We're going to switch right now into the topic of Alzheimer's disease. Now, this affects over 5 million people in our country. It's the second most feared disease, only next to cancer. Now, science used to tell us that we were born with all the brains that we'll have for a lifetime. This is now, though, being discovered to be untrue. We can grow new brain cells, so we can improve the health of our brain. We can reverse this disease if we are proactive early enough. Dr. Becky, thanks for being on this morning. Thank you very much for asking me. It's my pleasure. Well, it's always a pleasure having you on, Dr. Becky. And let's talk about this disease and what we can do to be proactive now. Thank you for asking. Um, I will tell you that I was so encouraged. I was recently at a conference where I got to listen to some really awesome neuroscientists talking. And they were showing um, there's wonderful new technology now where we can see brains on MRIs, you can look at brains. Um, it used to be that we could only look at deceased brains to try to figure out what was going on with Alzheimer's, but now with technology, we can look to see changes in brains before the patient is dead so that we can tell, are we actually making strong, significant improvements in the quality of brain function? And so the fact that we now know that we can improve brain function is so new. People didn't even think that that was possible before. So that's very exciting. Um, now, oftentimes the medical community thinks, okay, now what kind of pharmaceuticals then can we try to create to help with Alzheimer's? And though I appreciate they're wanting to help patients with Alzheimer's with a pharmaceutical, I, I understand their need to want to do that. But what's really cool is there are things that patients can do at home that aren't gonna require any pharmaceutical needs at all. And again, we can see on scans, on brain scans, how these simple at-home things can improve brain wow. function. The first thing that's really super important is to think about memorization, memorizing things. Um, and I know that sounds silly. And if people go online and just type under a Google search memorization skills or memorization programs, they'll be able to find programs. Simple things that start out simple, like in the, in the morning, write down like four things that you should think about all day long. Let's say bread, eggs, milk, and cheese. And you mm -hmm. write that down. And then you go about your day, and then maybe three or four hours later, it's like, what were those four words I was supposed to memorize? We have seen people, I mean, people in their late 70s and early 80s, that once they learn how to do these memor memorization skill sets, they can write down lists of 20 random words, 20, 25 random words, mm -hmm. and the very next day have somebody say, what were those 20 or 25 words? And they, and they can recall them. them. Wow. I know the truth is I could not do that right now. <laughs> and so that is super amazing. The other thing that we know that really helps the brain a lot is to do what they call a switch up, which means if you are a predominantly right-handed person, make yourself every single day do a skill with your non-predominant hand, so maybe your left hand, mm -hmm. not all day long, but let's say if you if you eat with your right hand, make a meal once per day where you use your other hand. Now you're gonna feel awkward and clumsy. There's no doubt about that. Right. But again, what it does to rewire the brain is awesome. Or again, watch, if you wear your watch on your right hand, put your watch on your left hand. Mm -hmm. All day long Simple you're gonna drive yourself crazy because you're going, oh, it's there. But again, it's amazing mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. that rewires the brain. The other thing that I learned about that we know, but I never thought about how important it was for the brain, is exercise is so important. When They call them mental push-ups. That's what the neurologist was saying when he was up on stage. He was talking about patients need to do mental push-ups, and if they do, the act of doing physical push-ups actually grows and strengthens the brain. So again, another reason why it's so important to be active, to go out. I don't care if it's just walking vigorously. I don't care if it's getting in a swimming pool, but something to physically push yourself every day. Mm -hmm. And for some of the viewers that are older, 75 or 80, and mobility may be an issue, again, they can still do a lot of physical fitness things sitting in a chair. And again, with Comcast Cable, they've got, I know there's, a, they have, what is that called, the on-demand, where there's the mm -hmm. exercise programs. Lots of seated exercise programs. So 
for people where there's a mobility issue find something that you can do to push yourself even if you can't get up and physically do it mm -hmm. and breathing exercises really so breathing breathing exercises. and but there's a specific ratio in which to do the breathing exercise in the breathing exercise that helps strengthen the brain and grow and strengthen especially part of the brain that's called the hippocampus is called the seven 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 breathing method what that means is you inhale for a count of seven you hold your breath for a count of seven and then you exhale for a count of seven and if you do that two or three times during the course of the day stop what you're doing and do ten reps of that just in for seven hold for seven do ten reps three or four times a day so again very simple things that we can clinically see on images it's amazing the changes that we can see wow. very 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 encouraging yeah these are so simple right Becky. I mean you're talking about memorization right the breathing and then switching if you're left-handed switch to your right hand right so anybody can do this anybody no. any age now is there like a certain age that you know if you're if you're past this age you really need to be doing it every day oh gosh the truth is if we're breathing on this earth now we really should be doing these four little steps every mm -hmm. single day and obviously it's never too early to start you can be in your late teens early 20s you're then just going to be that much more ahead of the ball game and mm -hmm. your risk then of thinking about cognitive loss will be minimized massively so mm -hmm. um so it, again it doesn't matter you can be 75 and 80 and still do these things absolutely you can so for those people that maybe have been diagnosed with early stage dementia, early stage Alzheimer's, then by all means there are still, make sure you do these activities because you for certain can improve your brain health. Mm -hmm. And now if you have any more questions about this, I know that you can contact Dr. Becky. Dr. Becky, have you worked with patients who have Alzheimer's Oh my gosh, obviously, especially down here in the mm -hmm. Keys, um, with our wonderful sweet snowbird population, we have many, many mm -hmm. patients where cognitive loss, and even if maybe they don't suffer with late stage Alzheimer's, the early stage Alzheimer's, I see that a lot. And again, the active things that we mm -hmm. can do to strengthen that brain to turn the tide is mm -hmm. really, really beneficial. To prevent this from ever happening to us. In the exactly, correct. It's not too late mm -hmm. to start. Never too late. All right. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Dr. Thanks. Becky, for being back on the show. I'm going to be right back after these messages, so please stay with me.